All right, this is going to be really fun. So we have uh, a unique entrepreneur here, a member, JR, from uh, Washington State. Yes. Okay, and he is he, he enters the organization as a successful, highly diversified service entrepreneur. Tell us about some of the businesses in your group. So septic pumping, drain cleaning, industrial maintenance, vac trucks, uh, civil construction, so installation of septic systems to also plats and roads and rebuilding utilities for municipalities um, to portable toilets, which we are one of the largest privately owned um, portable toilet companies in the country. So just curious for my own fascination, what was the very first one? Uh, we started as civil construction. Okay. And, and so are you, a, are you a civil engineer? I am not. Really? That's interesting. But what, what, what do you think, and this is not, uh, but it probably is a genesis to, to the whole thing. What, what's the, um, what's the, the source of your entrepreneurial drive? Well, so I'm a partial owner of the company. There okay. is um, a, I'll say full owner or somebody that owns the majority shares of it. And it has, I've learned to, that I want to serve and um, there is some of the legacy stuff. Can we keep the company going way past when we're gone? Which, um, so we have employee owners, and eventually the employees well, cool. will actually own it. That's cool. Is it an ESOP? Mm, it's a glorified ESOP. It's okay. kind of like that, but a little okay. different. Oh, yeah. cool. All right, so you've got 500 employees right now, plus or minus. Plus. Plus, and uh, that's, <laughs> that's, a lot of, that's a lot of leadership. Yes. Okay, so... Uh, you already had a viable and vibrant and diverse company before you ever became a member. Yes. But something resonated when you either were exposed to it or you met Mike, and I'm curious what that was and, and what it uh, represented so that I can get into your mind a little bit. So Mike has a different way of seeing the world. Um, one of the things I said the first time I saw him is he's batshit crazy. I like that. And I have told it, that to him is, in his face. Is that a compliment? Or it not? is 100% a compliment. Okay, good. I'm considered an asshole, so I take I love it. Okay. So. I bet you're fun um, to deal with. <laughs> well, I'm direct and Mike's direct, so we get along. I, and, I got and it. And generally, that's how it works. So listening to him, he offered me different perspectives on things that I thought I already knew and understand from a service perspective or a sales perspective. And... I appreciate that as I've gotten older, wanting to learn more about how to do what I do better, no matter what it is, no matter how I do it. And so I love what he brings to the table because he's so focused that I can come from, learn from him instead of going and learning the hard way. And he's actually drawing from lots of people and distilling it. One of the things that I was always, in my own work, uh, just uh, incredibly uh, amazed by where was how many different ways you can look at the same situation. Yeah. And there's not necessarily a right or a wrong. Part of it depends on your game plan, the strategy you're playing, cash flow, you know, your, your, your end game. And if you don't know the game you're playing, your decisions, you know, er everything's got to flow from the assumption and the assumption has to be right. Yep. That's interesting. If I may ask, uh, just curiously, what was one or a couple of interesting reframes or, or, or different distinctions that you might have gotten from Mike that uh, positively challenged your reality? So having been in this industry forever, my people are paid their union, okay. paid by the hour. Mike is a kind of an hourly with a spiff and things, and I've always been against commissioned people, which is how I saw that. Mm -hmm. And when I listened to Mike and he continued to talk about serving the customer, providing options, serving the customer, providing options, yeah. communicating and finding the customer. I'm like, I got to rethink this. It doesn't make sense to me in my head. So I had to continue to yes. listen and, and learn and ask questions to understand. And I ha won't tell you we've gotten there yet, but he's changed my mind. But, on the but you're embracing at least the ideology. Yes, 100%. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, a lot of times you also have to pencil it out to see you know, a lot of things that seem uh, counterintuitive can be very powerful. Yep. You know, I've, uh, we were talking earlier privately that uh, uh, I've had a couple of clients and the best ones I ever had were very comfortable with me making more than they did, which sounds counterintuitive, but they own the business. Yep. 
<laughs> and I was there for a, for a short period of time to, you know, to add value and restructure and embrace and, and boost up the strategy and the, and, and the, the, but they got to own the assets. So I think you have to realize that if you can get somebody, and I'm not saying what Mike says is right or wrong, but I've done a lot of nonlinear, uh, but, but surprisingly powerful, critically, stri critical thinking and strategic thinking, if you can integrate them together, it gives you an out outrageous advantage because most people are very linear, static, and then the one more thing, which is really interesting, I think Mike is, is very good at it, but I've gotten almost obsessive about it lately, is what I call consequential thinking. Okay. And what that means is critical thinking you understand, yep. strategic thinking you understand, yep. but the consequential thinking is let's look at the implication in as many facets as we can. What's going to happen, what might not, what goes wrong, if this happens, what's the outcome? what is going to happen in the mind of the recipient, not what's going to happen, how they're going to hear it, how they're going to see it, all these things. And if you understand all that, you have enormous power. I believe that I also question, though, that it does it uh, um, paralyze you because then you get into the mind and you start believing stuff that you think like that. So that's my, I believe that we have a lot of people that have consequential thinking and it stops them because they're worried about the poten potential impact. That's interesting. And, and don't go forward. See, and, and you might be very, very, uh, very accurate. It's it's also predicated on our definition and determine and and uh, and belief system. Mine is you acknowledge and you have a plan that incorporates whatever is going to happen, Overcome. but you have a priority. You, you know, the first thing is you have a strategic. Uh, uh, default that's what it's the game you're playing yeah but you're aware of how that game is being seen by everyone that you're playing it with who may not be volunteering to play it they're part of the players but they're not necessarily volunteers on the field they're collateral players if that makes sense yes and so you have to know how they're thinking when they get thrown into the vortex and you hope that but I but what I keep learning is they're lenses, the glasses they look through are way different than mine. Totally. Even though I believe I think I understand what they're thinking. Which is you figure why, out you don't. <laughs> I agree, which is why one of the greatest gifts you'll ever be given, and I think Mike shares it, but I'll share it with you myself, is the ability to empathically try to examine, explore, understand, uh, recognize, appreciate how each person you're interacting with that is critical sees life and what their definitions and their values and realities are because until and unless you grasp them, you can't get them on board. And if you, one of the things that I've learned a long time ago, you could have 100 people in a room and have a conversation and you could take half of the words you used and stop and ask people what came to mind and they would be totally, absolutely Way different. Totally different. Yeah. And if you think that their interpretation is the same as whatever is yours based on your definitions, your experiences, your education, uh, it isn't. So my example of believing what you just said and, and my own is I have been working in the sewer septic industry for pretty much all of my life. I teach about it. I understand it. And at the risk of saying it any other way, I believe I understand my shit. And okay. I have now in the last few years started traveling. I've been traveling for about 10 years abroad, but um, with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and literally working on um, waste management services in foreign countries and different things. And what I've come to learn is that I only stand, understand it in the U.S. for 300 um, million people comparatively to the other Four 7 state. billion in, in the world that totally have a completely different yeah. issues. And what I think I knew... I've completely changed and I have yet to understand the impact on me in that change of thought process, which gets down to every day I do something, I believe that I haven't got it all figured out more and more and more the, the more I've learned in the last but few that, years. But, but that's, you know, that's, it's a gift and a bane. The bane is you're trying to figure yeah. it out. The gift is the realization there's so much more to Boy, learn. You, yeah. I mean, you're nowhere close to the capacity and our minds have an almost infinite capacity to expand and process and distill. And then when you introduce a lot of different variabilities to it, it can create great hybrids. I always thought that uh, yep. 
you know, it, traveling broadens the mind in terms of worldwide, but traveling in industries broadens the mind. Traveling amongst uh, a broad spectrum of, uh, of, of uh, humanity broadens the mind too, because you and I aren't always the same. Yeah. You know, whether it's just belief, values, morality, and if I want to compel you, I first have to appreciate you, and you have to feel that I understand and appreciate you and, and respect you, because if I don't, then you're not going to be reciprocal to me. Yep. It's interesting. So if you were to give, uh, I'm enjoying it, you're gonna be fun to have an intellectual discussion with. If you were to, to share one or two meaningful reasons why someone who doesn't yet have 500 employees and, and complex uh, management and diverse business um, uh, divisions and, and, uh, and activities might want to align with CEO Warrior, what would you say it would be? Well, number one, be careful what you ask for because <laughs> you might get it. Okay. And, and many of us have questioned that sanity. That is, you're but, right. But is, is, that the, is that the Chinese curse? Probably. I think like it is. That. I think yeah. I said that is. Yeah. Um, so to me, the CEO warrior, and I actually just said it on stage, is I believe that one, they teach you different, better, cleaner ways to un and understand how to fi help find your your customers or your avatars yes. and number two once you find them how to keep them and how to serve them and continue to serve them and I don't want to sell people I don't want to take advantage of people I want to serve them and take care of them and if we do that they're going to stay with us forever You're right and and more as importantly is I have good employees that hopefully then will also stay there to continue to service that's, them forever. that's very enlightened that's great that's that's a good that's a good summary thank you very much what a privilege Thank You're an interesting your man.